Amsterdam street art is really a big thing in uh, in uh, urban situations now, and Amsterdam is one of the capitals of um, street art. And I have the honor this year to be on the jury of the St Amsterdam Street Art Award. So we're here. Uh, this is uh, uh, Bert Hagedorn behind me, and these are my fellow jury members. Hello, everybody. We're very serious about this. <laughs> and we're going to choose the winners. Now we're going to choose the nominees today, and then the winners are going to be announced when, Bert? Uh, Friday, the, the, the winner is going to be announced this, uh, June 2nd. June 2nd. Okay, so I will come back to you on my vlog with the winners on June 2nd. And uh, in the meantime, I can show you some of the people's work who have been nominated for this prize. To be continued. Yeah. Welcome to Amsterdam, Lauren Greenfield. Lauren speaking this evening at the John Adams Institute about her magnificent, monumental book called Generation Wealth a product of 25 years of following people and their wealth and their behavior. And she's going to talk about it this evening and also uh, uh, do a presentation. And her project is also coming to the Photo Museum in The Hague next year, which is really good news. One of the big kind of changes that I saw was um, our uh, kind of who we compare ourselves to and how our aspiration has changed. And one of the things that happened is that the American dream used to kind of center around comparing yourself with your neighbor and aspiring to having a little bit more like the, the, the neighbor in a little bit better house than you did. But as we've kind of started to spend more time with the media and gotten to know these characters more than our neighbors, our reference group has changed so that keeping up with the Joneses becomes keeping up with the Kardashians. Very Lauren, I have to admit that when I uh, looked through the book, I was amazed and also a bit disgusted. How did you deal with all these wealthy, spoiled people? I think the important thing about the work is it's actually not about the wealthy. It's about our aspiration to wealth. So there is a part uh, of it that's uh -huh. the 1%. And they're important because they have such a huge influence on what everybody else wants. But a big part of the kind of breadth of the work is that it's a desire that uh, almost no one is kind of outside. And so I'm kind of looking at our aspiration to wealth, the striving from little kids to grown people from California to New York to the middle of the country to Europe to China to Russia and um, so it's not just about America no it's really about how we've exported these values well I haven't biked past this part of the Saudos in a while the financial district to the south of Amsterdam. And I must say, I am really struck by the extent to which the Sautos is becoming a residential area. I knew that they were building a, a lot of apartments here and trying to make the neighborhood uh, more multifunctional instead of just uh, banks and accountants' offices and other kinds of offices. But as I see how much um, construction is going on of apartment buildings, well, it looks like our financial district is turning into a regular neighborhood. This is a tryout. We're going to find out if it's working. You'll see here all kinds of garden. demolished houses. Marianne, how did you come to this? It's a long story. I started with other series like The Living Room and in that series I began to
we step aside, we can see this magnificent work. Yes. <laughs> Next web, TNW, is Europe's biggest tech conference here in Amsterdam. And it's always an enormous and exciting event. I think last year there were 20,000 people and probably just as many this year. And uh, we're now halfway and I wanted to tell you about some of the exciting uh, voices that I heard today. The first one was Mike Quigley of Niantic. That's the tech company that launched Pokemon Go. And one of the interesting things he said was that Pokemon Go was about getting people out, away from their screen, getting them outside, and that the 65 million players of Pokemon Go had walked all together 11 billion kilometers. The other really interesting speaker today at the next web was uh, a guy from Hong Kong whose name is Ray Chan. He runs a company that is completely focused on millennials. And he told us that they did a big survey of millennials recently and asked them some really very probing questions. One of them was, for example, if you had to give something up, would you give up internet or would you give up sex? Yeah. So this is the country flag of Singapore. So more than, this is um, the highest percentage of people, of millennials, who are willing to give up sex. Yeah. And more than 55% of the Singaporean millennials, they're willing to give up sex so that they can continue to get online. And uh, they discovered that uh, of the Italians, 36% would give up sex. Uh, and in Singapore, that was 55%. So we know what Singaporeans find important. Maybe it's because they all live in such small houses that they don't have any place to have sex, this millennial group. Another interesting question was vote or voice. What would you give up, the right to vote or the right to express your voice on social media? And it was interesting to see that in Germany, 80% of the millennials voted for vote. They believe in the system. They find it very important to express themselves through voting within the system. But in Indonesia, apparently the millennials have much less faith in the system. And 49% of the millennials found it more important to have their voice out on social media than uh, through the official system of voting. And for the Dutch, this is a revolution. The idea that you're safer by lowering the dikes, this is extraordinary. In her latest book, journalist Tracy Metz, a longtime Netherlands resident, tells the story of how the farmers of Overdeep's Upholder voluntarily agreed to give up their land so that it could become a spillway for a nearby river when it floods in order to protect cities and towns downstream. Mascons brunch, the first ever reunion of the board, the jury, and the winners of the Mascons Prize, which was started in 1978. I was the winner in 2016, a great honor, and Dirk Simons, landscape architect, was the winner in 2002. <laughs> moet een wetenschappelijke kant aan zitten. Oh. Dus het, ze noemen ook alles tegenwoordig onderzoek. Oh ja, ja. Dat klopt. Ja. Dus wat wij, wat wij gewoon, ja. ik zou maar zeggen, een schetsend werk noemen, is het nieuw. Ja, ja. Is het onderzoek. Ja. Ja. Dus alles is onderzoek. Ja, klopt. En, uh, ja. en uh, daardoor verandert het onderwijs ook een beetje hoor. Ja. Wat je ook natuurlijk hebt, is dat, dat is ja, ook hopeloos. 
Als je daar docent wil worden, moet je gepromoveerd zijn tegenwoordig. Oh ja? Ja, wie is nou gepromoveerd? Dat zijn mensen die niet kunnen ontwerpen. Nee. Als je niet promoveren, moet je ermee. Nee.